Okay, welcome to the Code Room, presented by Stathole Sports. That's the name of my blog. Give me a follow on Twitter, at Stathole Sports. Um, I do a comedic bent on sports statistics writing. I'm not as, uh, I'm not as smart as the uh, sports analysts you probably follow out there, so I try to make up for it by being somewhat funny, hopefully. Um, but I guess you can make the determination on that. Um, just a quick plug of my blog now that I've got all this play-by-play -play data I'm starting to do a little bit more NBA up to this point it's been uh, primarily football um, NFL football so now that I've got this um, this data on hand you can count on seeing a lot more NBA articles coming your way um, including my latest one here um, there's no way an NBA basketball player missed uh, 35 shots in a row except when it did, and this is kind of the story of that. Uh, I threw it up on Reddit too, so it got a lot of love. Um, so hopefully you can check that out in one way or the other. And uh, just to go back here real quick. So once again, um, I, I don't really see a lot of MB, MB, NBA play-by-play -play data in the public realm. So I thought you know, why not scrape it and uh, offer it up? If you're not really interested in learning the scraping methodology to get the data, um, and I'm actually going to recommend that you actually don't scrape the data, um, but, you know, you can use this video as a, as a means of learning the techniques that you can adapt for, um, for use, especially on these sports reference sites. Um, they're, they're set up in similar ways that you can easily adapt the, the code to meet whatever whatever other type of um, tables you're trying to get out of here. But uh, anyway, where I was going with that is on my GitHub, if you just want the data and you don't want to scrape it, I've got a um, I've got a page here on my GitHub repo. I'll put a link to this, and it's just a quick file download, skip the scrape. Um, if you're in R, just copy this code and put it in there, and um, it'll probably take a while because there's a shit ton of data but you'll get it. Um, so just grab all of these years. If you're just interested in a particular year, you can just grab one, whatever you want to do. Okay. All right, so uh, anyway, what I'd want to show you is not this, we already saw that. Um, for play-by-play -play data on basketball reference, here's just a, a quick screenshot of some random game. And, um, there's a little tab that that's a play-by-play -play tab, and it'll bring you to this um, to this page. And this is just a quick a quick glimpse of what that looks like. Um, and obviously, it's a lot bigger. I just you know made the screenshot here. Still, all in all, all, in all this table is pretty shitty. I mean, it, it doesn't show you at least not in a column. It doesn't show you a column of the teams playing or the the date or the quarter. It's all kind of in these random uh, headers, so it's not tidy at all. So we're going to clean all of that up and um, get it in a way that is a lot more data analysis friendly, a lot more tidy. Uh, and then we're going to tease out a bunch of things from the string data to get... Uh, a lot of other, you know, pretty much who's, sh who's shooting the ball, who's getting a rebound, how f uh, far away were they shooting from, you know, all, all that kind of stuff we're going to pull out of this. And, yeah. Uh, so here's just, uh, I've just got a random month of all the games in the NBA for, it looks like, October of, uh, of this past season. Um, it's an October is an abridged month, so if I went to a different one, it would have been longer. But obviously, you'd have to, without scraping, you'd have to hit box score and then hit play-by-play -play for each game, copy-paste, whatever. Um, that's just an insane amount of tediousness. So we're not going to do any of that. We're going to scrape it all and uh, do it a lot more efficiently. And yeah, so here we go. Okay, so here we are now in our studio, and uh, we're going to get going here. Here are the packages that we're going to need. Um, our vest is the main scraping package, and curl kind of works hand-in-hand -hand, um, with, you know, helping compile the URLs, which you'll see. 
Tidyverse, a very popular package. Um, we'll use a lot of that. And then this HTTR is um, going to help us with um, recognizing which URLs are active or not, and you'll see why that's relevant in a little bit. Um, I think we use it for a few other things too, maybe, but that's the, the biggie. So really the first thing we need to do in order to scrape every NBA basketball play-by-play -play game is uh, the first thing is we're going to break this down by uh, by calendar year, not actually not season, calendar year. Um, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to walk you through doing this for 1996. Um, and then you would just repeat pretty much you would make one change to the code, one digit uh, change a six to a seven to get the next year and then kind of so on and so forth and just rerun everything so uh, but what we need in order to do this is we need the URLs for every every game of the season so right here in this first chunk I've got two example um, I've got two, ex two example URLs for the page that will take you to the uh, to that I think I'm even at one of them. I think this was the second one I pulled up. Yeah, so I'll just use this one. But this is what that play-by-play -play page looks like. And you can see here's that ugly-ass table that just is not... Yeah, whatever. So that's fine. Um, we're going we're gonna to fix that. Pretty much what I wanted to show you though is I put two examples on here so you can kind of see the pattern that the URL goes. Everything, everything is the same up until um, the, the numbers here. Pretty much everything I have highlighted in here is going to be different. Everything else is the same in every single URL in this, uh, in this entire database. And you can, you can kind of intuitively see what's going on here. So the first four digits are the year, and then we've got 10, so that's the month. And then 26th is the date. So October 26th of 2016. Uh, then we have this random zero here. And really, that's all I know it to be, is a random zero. Uh, the good news is, it's also in every one of these, so we just got to know it's there. And then we have a team abbreviation for the home team. So this was Phoenix was home and Tor Toronto can, can just confirm was the home team. Um, let's see. Yep, Toronto. Cool. So uh, so what we're gonna do is we are going to make a crap ton of uh, pretty much every combination of year and date and home team. Um, well, actually, we're not not year. We're gonna stick with 1996. Uh, we're gonna change everything else for every combination of month, day, and home team within 1996. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a little bit. And then we're gonna figure out which of those are active, um, because obviously not every combination you know played out. Um, and then we're just gonna keep those active URLs. To, uh, to pretty much loop through when we scrape. So the pieces that we need to um, we need to change in the URL they're going to be the month, the day, and the home team, kind of like I explained, because we're going to keep 1990s or the year, whatever year you're scraping, I should say, is uh, we're just going to keep constant. So down here, uh, this chunk is going to have the team abbreviation for you know who the home team is going to be and these are all of the teams that either are existing now or have existed between 96 and now um, so we're just going to create an object for that and then for month and days as well you'll notice month we need to put a zero before um, the single digits just to match up the style of b-ball reference because they do that too. Okay, so we have all of those here. All right, so now what we have, and I think this is where the curl package comes in. Um, it's going to help us insert 
the these objects into our our kind of like a scaffold URL here. So this is just a um, this is pretty much similar to what we saw above. Only we're we're going to use 1996, and we're not changing that. But we're going to loop every month here and create URLs for each month, each date, and each home team. Let's spread that out a little bit. There we go. Uh, and we're going to do it one by one. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll create URL, which is just which is just that, right? It's just that single. It's just that single one. Cool. Um, not helpful yet, but will be soon. Uh, then we're going to use the map function from per, and we're going to loop in all the team abbreviations. So all thirty whatever of those team abbreviations. Uh, we're running a G sub call, so we're looking th through the URL, which is just this, right? And we're looking for a pattern. We're looking for a, a literal bracket, and then home underscore team, and then a literal uh, close bracket, which is obviously here. And we're going to replace it with X, and X is the team abbreviation. So that's our, our anonymous function that we're creating here. Uh, and it's going to give us every um, a it's going to give us a URL for every team that either is now or has been since the beginning of um, the 96 97 season so now we'll, I'll show you that we called it URL 2 so I'll, I'm just going to run this and you can see there's 38 results everything is the same in this except for the, the team abbreviation which you can kind of see my cursor going through um, so everything worked well there. So that's the first step. All right, so now we just need to add a different component. So now that we have team, let's add days. And we're doing this in basically the same manner, um, except for obviously we're looking for the different pattern. We're looking for the date. And then um, we're not using URL now as our, um, as our data. We're using URL2 because we've already done some work on this. We need those 38 um, team names that have been that have already been added. All right, so this is going to make a lot more combinations. Still does it pretty quickly there, as you can see. How many are there? So now, yeah, URL3 instead of 38. Now we have 1,178. So I'll just show you real quickly. Um, oops just the first few and now we can see that not only do we have a home team designation but we've got um, the the day so the date and lastly we need to to put in the month so I won't walk through this one because it's the same story and again instead of URL 2 it's URL 3 look over month kind of get it by now okay so now URL 4 is 14,000 um, 14, uh, objects long. Let's do a quick head of that too, why not? Cool, so now we've got a complete URL, but we don't know if this is active yet. Um, obviously there weren't 14,000 games in the NBA just in 1996. So yeah, it's a lot of combos. What we need to do now is we need to parse out which of those are legit. And to find out which ones are legit, we're gonna run uh, we're gonna run this call up here. It's an S apply call, so a simplified apply. Uh, we're going to make this into a data frame. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to use the this this uh, call here from the HTTR package URL success, and we're going to um, figure out which ones which URLs are active, and that's what this does. Um, it's actually uh, URL success, uh, I should say, is a, a deprecated call. So it's actually, there's 
different one we should use, so we're gonna do that. Um, it's called HTTP error. So it gives you the flip, instead of saying if it's active, it tells you if it's not active, um, which is gonna make a difference down here. So let me change that now, just so it doesn't confuse you if you're skipping ahead. Um, but anyway, what we're doing is we're taking our URL4, so our 14,000 element long um, object, and we are going to uh, run this function on it to tell us uh, true or false whether that web page exists. Okay, and if it exists, then we know that hey, there was um, there was a basketball game with whatever combo that was, and we can pull play by play data from it. Okay, so um, just so you know, I already ran this uh, this line of code because it takes a long time to run um, this particular one here, uh, making this object called check link. Uh, what we're doing is we're running a simplified apply function here um, across all of our URL possibilities, all 14,000 of them, and we're running this thing called URL success um, from the HTTR package, and actually um, this is a deprecated function. Uh, it still works, but it's going to give you a lot of annoying messages, so I'm going to change this to the updated one, which is HTTP error. And um, we're just making a data frame out of this. After we're done with that, we're creating this object called link hit index, and we're just gonna pull which indices are uh, active. Uh, I should explain really what this function is. Um, what this function is, HTTP error, is it's, um, the HTTR package is pretty much pinging the website, the URL, to determine whether that's an actual web page. And um, if it doesn't get a, uh, an error as such, then it'll let you know. Um, so basically we're gonna have, this check link is gonna be full of true or falses. So if it's a true, that means there was an error, and if it was a false, that means that it's a, 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 a live page. Uh, meaning that that combination of dates and home team and, and um, all that uh, matched and was a game that actually occurred. And then uh, I need to change this now um, to false because instead of looking for success, we're looking for errors up here. So I needed to um, ch change that here because what's going on now is we are, um, we're creating, or, or we're, Figuring out which indi when, sorry, which indices are those live URL pages. Um, so which, you know, which of these are false, meaning which of them didn't have an error. All right, long-winded way of explaining that. Um, and then after you're, we're done with that, the URL final. This is going to be an object with all of our URLs that are um, active. Uh, so we're looking again through the 14,000 uh, element object here, all of our URLs, and this is gonna be all the indices that are um, that are active, and it's only gonna be retaining those because we're, we're bracketing that. And then I just, since it's kind of a lot of work, it takes a while to, um, to do that, I just saved that as an RDS for this particular year. So, uh, at the end of the day, I think I, um, yeah, I think I ran this already. Yeah, so I've got 422. After I did all this, I had 422 hits. So um, that's how many games were in 1996 from October to December. Uh, so it seems about right. So let's take a quick look. Take a quick look here. Um, okay, so we should be able to pull one of these and... Um, and put it in online, and we should get a live site. So let's just take that particular one. Here we go, and it, it works. So it takes us to this Pacers Bulls game, um, and the play-by-play -play page. So that's uh, that's good. That's what we wanted. So should be able to do that with any one of those, and they should all work. Okay, so here we are now to the actual scrape. 
this is what it's going to look like. So we've got, we're creating MBA 1996, and all we're doing is we're running a map data frame function from per. It's got two components, this dot x, which is our um, complete list of, uh, of active URLs, all 422 of them from um, 1996. And then the second component is the function, so the dot f. And the function runs from this line 124, and it goes all the way down to one, well, 148 here. This closes all of the components of the uh, function, and thus the scrape. Um, so to show you a little bit of how this works is I'm going to um, go to this next chunk and explain it. Um, I'm just going to scrape the first uh, element, so the first URL, and just so I can show you what it looks like. Uh, and I'm also going to cut the function off here. So we're just going to basically run this line of code, and I'll explain to you uh, what this stuff is afterwards and show you what that looks like at the end. Um, so I went ahead and did that already, and I have it up here. Um, but So real quickly, what's going on here is the first thing we're doing is a system sleep. Um, this just helps keep uh, from burdening the host site, so basketball reference. So it's going to wait two seconds in between each scrape. Um, so that's what that is. Should hopefully help from you from uh, being too demanding of the site and potentially getting yourself blocked uh, from scraping. So this is good housekeeping um, for any scrape. And then this cat call here, I'm going to return a one after every scrape. Um, that just helps with my sanity uh, so that I know that it is definitely still working and not frozen as it's going along. Okay, so we're going to create this um, data frame called df in our function. And uh, read HTML, this is now we're starting to use some of the rvest functions. Um, this the curl of x uh, and new handle, I pretty much needed to use this so that it recognized that I wasn't like a bot or something. All I know is that it didn't work without this, which I find kind of weird because I'm pretty sure I am a bot if I'm scraping. I'm not doing it manually, I'm, but whatever. Perhaps this is tricking the website, and all I know is that it works, so I'm fine with it. Carrying on. HTML nodes, uh, this is kind of telling our best what you want to do on that once you get to the web page and I want it to take a table so it knows okay I'm looking for a, a table um, and it you know looks for the CSS or HTML um, code that you know designates a table um, when you do that supposedly this call isn't necessary but I found that it was because some columns had more NAs than I think columns in the data or something like that that R just got real finicky and bitchy about and didn't want to work so I figured out that this will make it work it appeases the R god so this is what I did that's what I know um, you might not need to use this for other scrapes, but for some reason this one I did. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And then finally here, we've got um, uh, we're, this dot double bracket one is saying that we want the first table on the page. So in case there's more than one table, uh, it might trip up our best and not know which one that you want, or it might assume you want the wrong one. Um, so this was just helpful for me. And then set names, I'm just telling what names I want the columns, which I kind of, after playing around uh, and, and seeing what happened, this is what made sense. Okay, so I went ahead and ran this and got it up here. And you can see that we've got... Uh, the following columns. So we've got the time, we've got the away play, away score, combined score, home score, and home play. 
Um, so what you're going to see is in the second column of the first row, we've got the away team listed, and then in the sixth column of the same row, we've got the home team. So uh, you'll notice here when we act run the actual scrape and we we take this out and extend uh, extend the function, we are indexing the home team and, and label and giving it uh, or putting it into an object. And then the same thing with the home team. And you can see here, it's just a straightforward index taking the information that's in that, which I just showed you. And then down here, we're attaching that to an object. So every row is going to have, um, you know, uh, what what the away team is and, um, and home team for a different column. Okay. This here, uh, this is not a part of the scrape. So just so you know, don't get thrown off. I put this here just to kind of explain um, the last remaining parts of the scrape, which I'll highlight here. Um, but we're, what we're doing is we're going to be extracting information from the URL itself to put into our, um, into our data frame. And as you can see, we're doing the, the date, the year, and the month. Um, and then also the the day. So we're doing the date and then kind of parsing out the different components of it here. Um, and it kind of split this up because this all kind of goes together. We'll get to this uh, 186 and below in just a minute. But So just we're using uh, from the stringer package string extract and uh, pulling from just, you know, since I'm doing a test data set, just URL final one, You'll notice in the real scrape this says X, which uh, makes sense because we want, yeah, right here they all say X because um, it's going to pull whatever that URL is, one of, you know, 422 for for this case. Okay, but the, the key component here is going to be this regex function. Um, so we've got a, um, a look around function here. So in between the parentheses, we've got a... Um, a positive look behind, I believe, is what you would call this one. What we're doing is we're looking for um, we're looking for this data because it's inside um, the question mark, less unsigned and equals. This this is um, telling the regex that we're, we we want to do a positive look behind, and so the rest of the data inside the um, inside the parentheses is uh, telling that function what it wants you to look for. And so for in instance, this one, we want to see play by play. And then um, these are escape characters for a literal forward slash. So we want to look for a play by play and literal forward slash in our URL, which you can see right here. Okay. PBP literal forward slash. Okay. Once you find that, then you return um, a, a, a D. So uh, this is for a digit. Sorry, not a D, a digit, and you want eight of them. And obviously after this, you've got four digits here, and then two here, and two here. So um, obviously we've got the year 2016, and then October 26th, right? So that's what's going on here. Um, so we're just pulling the whole thing, and that's going to be our date. For the year, we only want the first four digits, so uh, very similar thing. Uh, everything else is the same, except for instead of eight, we're doing four. Everything else is the same, so that makes sense, right? And then for month, um, similar, but maybe a little bit trickier. We're taking, we're basically adding to our uh, positive look behind. We're making it bigger, because we also, uh, in addition to PBP, literal forward slash we also want four digits we want it to find four digits and not return them right because that's the year but and then we want it to return the next two digits so that's what this is here digits two and so that that means uh, we're looking for this and when we find this we return the next two digits which is this 10 which is our month right okay and a similar process for day um as well so let's see here yeah so instead of four we change it to six because we want to skip two more digits and get the date which in this case would be 26th 
and that's what this would be. So it would re it'll return the 26 for that day. Okay, I think I did a pretty good job for me anyway explaining that because I am not a um, a regex wizard. Um, if you think I did this on myself, uh, by myself, pfft, no. I did not, but I'm getting better with it, so I guess that's cool. Um, Alright, and then moving on, so now I want to create a play ID for each game. Uh, this is just kind of good housekeeping so that, you know, however we uh, sort our data when we're playing around with it at the end of the day, um, we have a way to make sure that we can keep it in chronological order. Uh, so that's what that this is going to do. One through the number of rows of, of the data frame. That will depend on the game. Um, so this will give us that. And then the game ID. So we also want to have a way to, to group uh, things by a game. And, um, and so we need... To, to basically do this on our own. So the way I, I went ahead and did it was just doing a paste zero, and so it's just going to bring the away team, the home team, and then the, the full date. Um, that's You're never going to have the same date and the same home team and the same away team. Um, if it does, I'll give you a dollar. I don't think it'll happen. don't know that they have double headers in the NBA. That would be the only way. Okay, anyway. And then um, afterwards, I'm just taking out the spaces in that game date just to make it all compact. That's what this is here. String replace all um, for the game ID that we just created. We're looking for a space. We're replacing it with nothing. So that that is pretty much it. Um, and if we just scroll back up here again, um, you'll notice after we return the, the data frame, uh, we close out the function. Um, and again, you'll notice the URL that I put down there isn't here because that was just for, um, for referencing. And this, this will take a while to scrape. Um, well, actually, for this particular month not, or year, it won't take too long, but but that's pretty much it um, for the scraping. So we'll move on here in just a minute to what we want to do afterwards. Because like I was saying before, um, you know, this is a lot like, if you think of in photography terms, the initial scrape is setting up the camera. So getting your aperture, your, uh, your shutter speed, ISO, all that. Um, where it needs to be and what we're going to do next is post-processing okay one last thing here uh, I do want to show you what this looks like after you run the scrape so I went ahead and did that um, just to show you that everything worked here so we still have the same um, the same columns as before but now you can see now we have our away team column we have our home team um, just scroll this over here, the full date, and then parsed out by year, month, day, and then a play by, um, a play ID, and then a game ID. And let's see if I can, um, let's actually do two, let's do three, why not? Let's do three scrapes, and then I can prove to you that it, uh, it will iterate for each individual game here. So um, let's run in here. You can see it's given me the one for every time the scrape is complete. And now it's done. So go over here. We still have uh, the same data as before, but let's scroll down the old fashioned way here. Okay, now you can see we, we've moved on to a different team. So Cleveland, New Jersey was the second game. And then, let's see who played here. Dallas and Denver. Cool. So we can kind of see that everything worked. Okay, so after you go ahead and run the full scrape, 
Um, then it's just a matter of <coughs> doing that again for every year. And really the only, everything's going to be the same except all the way, um, <coughs> all the way at the beginning, you're going to put in, instead of here, <coughs> on our very first URL, when you start creating <coughs> the list of URLs, you're going to change it to the next calendar year that you want. So I can go from 96 to 97. And then basically everything else <coughs> follows the same. And you'll repeat that for, oh, obviously you want to rename the, uh, the scrape then, right? So instead of, well, that's the example, but the, remember to change the scrape there so you don't just overwrite your old one. Um, and then I've got this, so this call here, um, I was having issues being able to create a data frame that is 13 million rows long with 40 something, or not 40, 14 columns. So I ended up looking around or figuring out what to do and someone advised making the memory limit to 56,000. I think it's set at about 8,000 something as default. I don't know um, much about why this wouldn't just be set to this beforehand. It's probably some reason, but um, I went ahead and did that and uh, it worked worked okay, although it did take a little bit of time. And then this is just a bind rows of all of your years, and that's going to give you um, your data. So we're going to go down now to uh, the scrape. Don't worry too much about this. This was something that I did. Um, I made a, uh, this YT is really going to be the this here all years, so it's going to be all of the data. So I've got 13.8 million records for all these years and all the games. Um, and then I'm making a smaller version of it, uh, a small subset of it, so that for purposes of explaining this, it doesn't take forever to run. Okay, so with that said, here is the um, this long chain of deplier calls. It goes all the way down, goes down pretty far. <sighs> To, yeah, line 401. And this is going to wrangle and clean up all of our, uh, everything that, well, we likely want, or at least that I thought of. Um, you might have some more to add, which would be cool too. But uh, anyway, the first thing we need to do is we need to make some of our data the right type of data. And just do a quick glimpse here you'll see um, the year or the date year month and day they're all character data um, so I went ahead and uh, I guess I didn't do it for date but you can probably do add date to this too but at least for month date and play ID um, yeah well play ID is already an integer so maybe I didn't need that but in any case we're going to change it to a numeric um, variable type. Um, okay, so then I'm also going to take out all of the rows that start with time. So if we look back at our old test um, scrape here, the first row, now that we've extracted the away team and the home team, this data isn't useful at all, and I think it has one of these for either every quarter or at least every game. So I'm just taking them out. We don't need it. And then we're going to separate time into minutes, seconds, and tenths. So if you look back here, time, um, still a little clunky, and to better filter it, um, I'm you know, going to do that. Just seemed to make sense, and you can further, further manipulate uh, that to make it, you know, maybe seconds left or something like, something like that. I know NFL uh, Scraper does that. So that's easily, um, if you want to do that, you easily can. And then we're changing that to numeric, because I, I think it doesn't, when you run this call, it'll be character data. Uh, so we're just changing this all to numeric here. Okay. Let's real quickly show you what this looks like. 
I'm calling this df. <coughs> okay. Get rid of this now. Cool. So you can see uh, the minutes, seconds, and tenths. I did this thing called what remove equals false. So if you don't do this, the default is to remove the column that you uh, separated. But just to show you um, that it works, it's kind of nice to leave it. So you can see uh, everything looks looks good here. We actually don't even need this column tenths because I don't think it, that's ever recorded. But whatever. Um, okay, so the next thing we need to do, and this is a, was a little bit tricky, is we need to figure out what the quarter was. Um, and you'll see that we have start of first quarter here. Um, this is going to be um, this is going to be repetitive for every quarter. So I'm I'm just doing a quick filter here to show um, how that works. So we got start of first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, you know, so on and so forth. So um, we need to flag this, and uh, that's going to help by flagging all of all of these instances. That's going to help us determine what the quarter is. So first, I'm just going to make um, make a column called quarter, which is going to be zero. It's going to equal zero for everything, right? So there it is, zero, 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 zero. zero. Okay, cool. Then we're going to do a case one function. Um, I'm not going to go too in depth. Uh, explaining this function other than what it's doing is it's looking for in uh, it's looking in this column away play which is where we uh, where we saw the start of and it's looking for that it's looking for start of first quarter and then where the row that it finds it in it's going to um, it's going to give it a one and it's doing this in the quarter uh, column that we just created so all the other uh, rows are going to be 0, and then we're, this row is going to be a 1. Same thing with the second, third, fourth quarter, and then any overtime. So I went ahead and, and did a, uh, figured out how many overtimes there were, and I think this was how many of them um, there was. And let me show you what that looks like here. It's probably easier just to see it. Cool, okay. Okay, so you can see, well, uh, we've got a 1 here, and it gave an A's for the rest. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so the next call, we change that. So we just a, an if-else call looking for, if it's an NA in quarter, give it a 0, otherwise leave it with whatever that was. So, all right, let me just run that additional line. And, okay, cool. So now we have our zero. So zero, 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 zero. And if if I do starts with, I should see a bunch of ones. Oops. Um, was it looking in? Oh, start of. Duh. Start of. Okay. And come over here. Yeah. So it's all a bunch of ones. Where it says start of. Okay. Looking good. So this is going to set up a, um, a cumulative function in order to get what quarter it is for every row of data. Um, but we first we need to group by the game ID. So now you, you remember we made that um, combination of the away team, the home team, and the date. So we're going to group it by each individual game. And uh, so that when we run this next call, uh, this next case when it's doing it on a game by game basis and what it's doing is it's looking it's doing a cumulative sum of the quarter column and if that cumulative sum is one it's going to equal a one so this kind of let me take this away here this should make sense so for the first play of the game it equals one so the quarter the new quarter column will equal one and so will the second, third, fourth, and so on, because the cumulative um, sum of all of the uh, all of the numbers is still one until you get to the second quarter. 
when we get to the second quarter, then that 1 adds the cumulative sum to 2, and that's going to make it the second quarter, which is what's going on here. And so on and so forth um, until, you know, the 5 is going to be OT1, 6, you know, overtime 2, and overtime 3. Uh, so, usually it's better just to show you. Hopefully that explanation was somewhat good. Yeah, so we've got quarter one, and um, do this the old-fashioned way. Let's just scroll down to quarter two. Ours being weird, I don't know why it does that. Great, okay, here we go. So we've got the next trigger here. So in cor this quarter is one. Oh, and by the way, we named this QTR. Um, just to kind of separate it so I can show you what's going on. And then it goes on to two. So on and so forth. And then, um, yeah, so I just skipped down to a new game and you can see that it started over. That's what I was looking for. Wow, that play ID, let's go play ID to one, first play of the game. Uh, first play of the game is taken out because it was that time, but that's fine. It's still in sequential order. Um, and yeah, you can see it starts over because we grouped by the game ID. Okay. Okay, so now that we have the quarter all set, uh, we're gonna move on to this this one right here, and really all we're doing is we're taking the two columns um, that the string string data uh, information about the play is coming from, either away play or home play, and we're going to make it just into one. Uh, simply by taking, you know, if, if away play, if the number of characters in away play is more than zero, then um, we stick away play into play, and otherwise if it equals zero, then the data must be in the home play column. Uh, so we, you know, stick that in there. So we'll run this, and I'll show you that it should fill <clears throat> should fill that in nicely for us. There we go. Okay. Cool. All as well. All right. Next thing here. All right. Player shot. So. Um, we want to do a little regex work now, and we're going to determine who um, was shooting on plays in which a shot occurred. So we're going to take our um, newly formed play column and run a string extract on it. And um, what we're looking for is um, we're going to have it pull f starting from the beginning of the string all um, uh, all all the data up until it gets to this look uh, this look ahead which consists of one or more uh, spaces and then optionally the word misses or makes and a word boundary so once it finds a, this if it matches this pattern it's going to return um, the data the data leading up to it so let me show you what that looks like because that'll make more sense So, here we go. For Dennis Rodman here, um, so the regex found uh, makes, right? So it was looking for a space, which is here, and then makes, um, and then it's returning all the data before that, which is D Rodman, and you can see it did that. And so on for everyone else in which the word makes or misses um, is in the string. All right. Okay, this part was a little a little fun. I uh, wanted to find out all of the different types of fouls in the NBA, and let me tell you, there's quite a few here. As um, I kind of just scroll scroll down, these are all different types of of fouls um, up until I think here. Um, but how you know how do you how do you know um, that you have identified all the different types of fouls? So, um, in order to make sure that I 
did get all of them, I'm going to come down here because um, I just have a special little section where um, where I go about figuring all that out. Um, so we're going to uh, we're going to make just a, a little data frame here just to show you how I did that. And I'm taking just the the data frame that we've been working on. Um, I think I already did this part. So I probably don't didn't need to include that, but whatever, it can be in there. Um, and then we're going to make a column called foul, and it's going to extract the word foul if it exists in play. So show you what this looks like here. There we go. So uh, now now we have a way to kind of filter. Um, all of these NAs out so that I'm only retaining rows in which there was a file. And that's you know exactly what I'm doing with the drop NA afterwards. So let's do that. And here we go. So just plays with, with files now of all sorts of different types. Uh, next, next one here, just I'm just selecting the play column because that's all we need. Um, you'll see the game ID comes along with it because it's grouped, so that's fine. That can stay like that um, for now. And then we're going to create this column called type, which is going to extract um, the all the data before we get to the uh, a, a space and then by, and then another space. So. Again, this is a forward look ahead, and um, it's looking for the pattern of space, by, and then space. And then again, we're going to pull retain everything before that and put it into this column called type. Let's just run it, and I'll show you what it is. OK, cool. So for instance, here's a space, and then by, and then space, and then everything before it it returned. So on and so forth. Okay, and then I ungrouped here, it looks like, to get rid of that grouping column, and then um, just took the distinct uh, types. And this gives us all of our foul types. Here they are. Um, so I've got 18 here. Now there's actually there's actually some more, and that's um, because I was just starting this from um, our our sample size um, of like less than 30,000 rows. Where in our the the YT this has all of the rows, um, you know, 13.8 million of them. So there were some random files that um, didn't find their way in there, but Again, I reduced that just for the sake of not uh, having to take forever to run this while I'm showing it. <sighs> okay, so um, yeah, and so at the end of the day, here here's here were all the files. So from line 266 to let's see, um, I think flagrant. I think this was yeah. So to 291. So we have a personal file, shooting file, loose ball, technical, offensive, defensive, three seconds, flagrant, on and on and on, unknown file. This one actually is my favorite. Um, basically, the ref decided that he doesn't know an explanation. So there was a foul. It's unknown. Too bad. Um, got the hanging tech file. I think that must be like hanging on the rim, I'm assuming. Um, the non-unsport technical foul. Some double negative action going on there. Um, I have a good old elbow foul. Excess timeout technical foul. Not really sure what that is. Is that like a, the, um, a Chris Weber foul from college? I don't know. Anyway, um, enough of that. So again, this is just all just one big case one. So it's looking in play and it's looking for, uh, it's looking to detect this pattern, which is, um, you know, for each one, and then it's going to assign it with pretty much what that is. So, um, on and on and on and on. 
Okay. After we do that, um, it ends here. So for line 292, then we're going to make this free throw foul type. Um, and again, this is another just little case one. And it's looking, um, it's it's looking at play and um, looking for you know makes or misses and also free throw because we're only interested in free throws and then it's returning the lag of foul type so this will tell you um, you know how that player at the free throw line got there. All right, so let's just run this. Might be try to show an example of that. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so for instance, Dennis Rodman um, was fouled by P. Ellison, and it was a shooting foul. So um, Rodman shooting. Um, Rodman doesn't have a foul type because he's not the one that fouled, but P. Ellison is, and it was a shooting, shooting foul, so this is returning the lag of foul type, which is this, and putting it there. Okay. All right, moving on. So now we're going to create a column called three throw make. And um, so just another case when string detect play, you can see we're using this a lot. Um, and we're looking for makes free throw. Then we give it a one. Uh, you'll notice this is, um, I did this in character. Uh, I'm not really sure why, to be honest, but I end up changing it to numeric. I'm just going to leave this as is, so sorry if this is just stupid, but it does work. Um, so, and then similar thing here, we're just looking for misses, and then we'll put a zero. Um, and then... I guess this is just anything else. Give it an A, and then... Um, mutate at, we're looking at the column we just made and change it to as numeric and it'll convert all of these NAs to real NAs. Um, so here, I'll just run this. Okay. Here we go, we've got an example of Rodman making a free throw, and let's find another one here. Another free throw. Yeah, so you can see um, if I do a filter here for all the free throws, then we're seeing all this filled in, so. Looks pretty good. Misses is zero, makes is one. Um, everything looks to be checking out there. Okay. Moving on here. Neutral plays are listed in both teams, so this parses those out. Okay, so we're going to make a um, a possession column. So um, up until now, we don't really, um, you know, we've got the home and away team listed for the game, but um, since we have transferred the home play and away play data into just a play column, um, <clears throat> We really don't have a. We should have a column saying who, what team has the ball, right? Just kind of makes sense. So we're gonna do that here, uh, with an if else uh, statement, and so if 
um, you know, we've used this before, we're doing it again. So if the number of characters in away play is greater than zero, and the number of characters in home play is greater than zero, um, we're going to put, we're going to um, put nothing or have a blank in possession. Um, this, for instance, would happen in the first, like this first row here, start of first quarter in away play. It's also listed in home play here. So, um, and it, so it, nobody really has the ball yet. Nothing is happening. So we're just going to make that blank. And that's what we're doing there. Um, so if, uh, so there's a, a nested if else in here too. I could have just did another case when I probably should have, but, um, but this isn't overly complicated, hopefully. But if, um, number of characters in way play is greater than zero, then we give it a home away team. Um, and then if, if not, we put the home team. So, um, if you remember those columns, yeah, they are right here. So, um, it'll populate, you know, whatever team that is. And that means that they have the ball. Let's do that. Okay, so you'll see we've got, to start this game, we've got two blanks, right? And um, now I showed you start of the f start of first quarter, it would be Y. And it looks like the jump ball also is listed in, yeah, both the home team and away team, or away play, home team, yeah. So they're both in there, so that's why it's, um, there's nothing here, because that means no team has possession. And then obviously Rodman took a shot. He's on the Bulls in um, 96, so um, it's got the right team there for Boston. D. Wesley. Um, yeah, so you can see it's it's putting the right team in for each, you know, each play here. Looking, uh, looking pretty good. All right. Moving on, line 304. We're getting there. Away points added. Um, we are going to sub um, from away score the uh, any of the digits. Things was going on there. Yeah. So if we look at away score, and then a similar thing for home score down here. So you can see we're doing away points added and home points added in the same fashion. So we're looking for, um, ah, we're looking for a non, uh, this capital D is a non, um, numeric digit, um, or character, non numeric character and one or more of them. And we're going to replace it with nothing. Cause we just want, um, we just want numbers. So let's go and show you what. So like, for instance, we've got a plus and a two, right? So we don't want that plus um, in our away score and then also our home score. Uh, so this should, um, this should take that out and put it into a new column called away points added. So again, um, that equals an as numeric, we're doing a sub, we're substituting any non-digit with nothing from away score, and then same thing with home score. All right. So you'll notice nothing changed here, which is fine, because um, we're we're doing this in in two new columns. And okay, it's looking looking pretty good here. So we've added um, in the third row two points for Chicago, and then in the fifth row another point. 
and then Boston two points the play after that. And just take a quick scroll down this lane here. Yeah, so we've got a plus two. Um, the way team in Chicago plus one and, and plus two. So it uh, is, is checking out here for us. So this is good. So now we've got, um, we're going to have data on, um, on that we can build off of and kind of put in the score of the game, which we're going to get to. Um, all right. So then we're just going to replace those NAs in both those columns with zero. So that's all we're doing here. I'm not going to run this and show you so you can kind of get what what that means, right? So all of these would be zero instead of NA. Okay. So I'm going to show the score in two different ways on each um, on each row. One is going to be after the shot, and one is going to be before the shot. And for each, the home and the away team. So pretty much we're looking at these these rows here. Um, so we're going to look at the cumulative sum of away points added, that column we just created, and then um, same thing with home points added. Uh -huh. So let's just run that. Cool, so looking pretty good here. So our, we have away points added two and then away score after shot two. Makes sense. And then it stays the same until they uh, looks like we hit, make a free throw there. So it's three and it's three all the way up until this shot is made here, then five and so on, right? And a similar thing for home points added um, wasn't until this row where Boston made a two-point shot so they had zero up until then and they had two until they made another shot here so on and so forth so here we go so we have our score for the game um, uh, after the shot here and do I not have before the shot yet let me see Ah, uh, right, okay, so I haven't done before the shot, uh, which is this next one. So, highlight this so you can see what I'm looking at. Now, uh, very similar thing, only we're doing the lag of the cumulative sum, um, so that we know what, what the score was while the team had the ball before that action uh, came about. So the reason for to have it this way, um, at least in my thinking, was to help if you want to look at you know some sort of uh, clutch shooting uh, analysis you want to run, and you know you might you might s want to filter the data to show all of the shot percentage or all the shots made or whatever when a team is down two and less than you know however long. In the game, this would be what you would need to be able to do that. All right, I'm just gonna let this be um, and move on here. So difference after play. So we're just doing an if else. If the possession equals the home team, then it's the home score after shot minus the away score after shot, right? Um, but if that's not the case, then it's the away score, it's the other way around, right? So, um, so that'll get the difference after the play, and then a similar thing for the difference before the play. Okay, so from here we've done a little bit, so I'll go ahead and run this and just give you a, a little bit of a visual. Because let me tell you, my explanation on this, I can tell, is B-team at best. So, I'm um, going to try to show you as much as uh, possible. Okay, 
yeah, we can kind of see things are, are going well here. Difference before play, difference after play. Um, home score before shot. So like here, um, minus five. So this team was down five before and after the play. So it looks like they probably didn't make a shot. Yeah, no points were added. Um, and it was nine to four. And Boston was, um, must have been the home team then. You can see there's a five point difference. Cool. Okay. We're gonna plow through here. So the next one we're looking at is field goal length. So um, another regex here looking at the play column. And what we're looking for is um, we've got a positive look behind and a positive look ahead here. So from blank feet, and we wanted to pull what that blank is. Um, that's going to give us our, our field goal length. Um, let me just look at an example here of a shot. Here we go. Scotty Pippen makes two-point hook shot from blank feet and that blank would be eight right so that's kind of what it's it's looking for from and it's looking for feet and it's going to pull the data in between it so here from 24 feet it should pull that 24. And you'll notice it doesn't pull anything here because there's no from feet for a layup um hold that thought we'll get to it I'm just gonna run this. Okay. Cool, so we've got uh, a couple of shots here, 20 feet and 15 feet. Let's just scroll over and make sure that's legit. Looks like it, yep. And it makes and it misses, so um, logs it. Regardless of the result of the attempt, let's see, let's find another one here. 24 feet here, D. Wesley, let's see, that log, it sure did. Cool. All right. Okay, so now we're going to make a column called um, field goal result. And we're looking for um, where we find misses and free throw make is an A. Then we're going to make this a zero. And the reason for that is field goal uh, attempts, free throws aren't counted as field goal attempts. Um, so we don't want to take that into consideration. Um, so so long as field goal attempt or free throw make uh, is NA, that means that there wasn't a free throw attempt. It would either have been a one or a zero for a make or a miss. Um, and you know, it's assigning a zero for, for a miss and a one for a make. And then right after that, we've done this before, we're, we're making the columns field goal result and field goal length uh, into numerics. Okay. All right, so like I said before, this what the field goal result wasn't and the field goal length wasn't um, isn't capturing shots at the rim and they need to be a length of 0, so that is what this call does here. Uh, it's taking field goal length or it's it's actually, you know, redefining it. And we're doing it in a if else. So if it's NA and free throw make is NA, so it wasn't a free throw attempt, and player shot isn't NA, meaning that a player was shooting, then um, we assign it to a zero. So th these would be all the instances in which uh, there was no field goal length because it didn't pick up um, our field goal length call, didn't pick up anything 
it didn't have a from and a feet in it. Okay, and that will clean up all of that. And I will show you to verify that it works. Okay, so here you can see field goal length is zero and it still shows a one. Let's see. Yeah, so it makes layup. It doesn't have the from whatever feet, but we still are able to capture the length with it being zero. All right. Uh, the next column I made is called shot type, so it's just um, going to pull, you know, whether it was like a jump shot, a hook shot, or or whatever. Um, and so it, just another regex, it's looking for a dash point, and then whatever um, data is in between dash point and from. So let's see what that would look like. Okay, so here, Michael Jordan misses uh, dash point jump shot from. So the data in between from and dash point would be jump shot. So that's the type of shot it was. Same thing here. And um, so down here we've got a hook shot. So again, dash point and then hook shot from. So it would be pulling that hook shot and so on and so forth. And then we're redefining shot type again. Let's see, what am I doing here? So if shot type is an A, then um, string extract from play. Going to be honest, I don't really know what's going on with this one. Oh, combine shots with no field goal length like layups. Okay. So we're doing a little bit of just fixing up here with, um, with, you know, if there's no field, uh, uh, no length to the shot. And then down here, if there's um, parentheses, um, we're fixing it up again. We're looking for a literal um, parenthesis there, and um, we're gonna replace it with uh, the data before it, it looks like, otherwise just keep the original shot type. Yeah, just having a hard time kind of remembering the reason why I was doing all of that. Let's just run it again make sure it looks okay. Shot type. Okay, looks okay to me. Bunch of different types of shots there. Looks like I do one more little cleanup here by just trimming the white space from um, from shot type. So uh, it's just a little, little housekeeping there. Okay, so I won't go through all of these, but let me just highlight. Um, yeah, the, so for all, all of these column creations, we're we're making a column for assist, steal, turnover, block, offensive rebound, defensive rebound, traveling, foul, um, and foul type. Um, so for all except believe the last one um, we're going to be putting the player that you know had an assist or whatever else and then you can kind of uh, count how many of these statistics a player had in a game whether for good or for bad um, I will say for this one here player foul um, as far as the regex goes 
this is basically voodoo. Um, I'm not going to be able to explain that well how how this works, but we're looking for either file by in a space or file type with either um, a one or a two by space, and then yeah, the rest of this I'm I'm just going to move on. Player draw foul. Um, yeah, you might want to look up you know what players are. Um, good at drawing fouls and getting to the free throw line, things like that. Okay. All right, we're just about done here. I think the last two things that um, that I have are just creating the seasons, um, because as we have it now, I just have the year, the calendar year that we were working off from the scrape, wherever that is. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, but um, it doesn't necessarily tell us the season. So, um, just another case one, and it's just a really long one. So, if the year is 1996, or the year is 97, and the month is um, lower than 10, so lower than October, we know it's the 96-97 season, so that's what we assign it. And a very similar pattern for all of the other years. So I'm not going to go through all of them. But that's um, pretty much what that is. And then, then it looks like I went ahead and deselected some columns that I didn't need anymore. Such as the away play and home play since we combined them into one. And then also the home score and away score. These were the... the um, the columns that still had the you know, the crap in it, um, we we fixed those at the end. Also, combined score, yeah, we don't need that because where even was that? Here it is. Yeah. And I went ahead and took out any um, play that had the start of it looks like um, why not because I, I'd already used this to determine um, what quarter it was so it's not really needed anymore and then for the playoffs I, I did a, a special column to denote whether the game was in the playoffs or not and I kind of just tediously um, went on NBA reference and found the very first day for round one of the playoffs and used that in here to determine whether I should give a one for playoffs or a zero for not playoffs. And that'll help um, if, you, if you are only looking at, you know, regular season data or if you're only looking at playoff data. I don't have finals or a spe specific rounds for this. That was... Um, I drew the line there. Uh, this took long enough, so um, may as well run this whole thing. And now that we're finally done with this bullshit, and I'm probably gonna look to do some more. Um, I know there's a lot of other stuff that we can do with this, but I think this is at least in a spot where it is um, ready to ready to be utilized in some way so here here it is here's all the columns we're retaining um, got our game ID there probably could have got rid of this quarter column um, oh well whatever player shot file type All of our score data here, field goal length, field goal results. You'll notice the NAs for not applicable shots, shot types. All right, here we've got some players with assists, players with a steal, player with a turnover. Wow. It's a rebound. Season playoffs. Okay. 
I mean, not a bad start, I think. Um, considering I don't see anyone else out here doing anything um, like this to get play-by-play -play data for the NBA. Um, so yeah, and again, I have uh, the data on my GitHub, so really, if, if you just want the data, just pull it from, from my GitHub instead of scraping it, because that, um, that will kind of unburden unburden them and that's pretty much it